I am currently, sorry, I <laughs> love that message. Um, anyway, I am a UX designer, um, a freelancer right now, and I'm working with a company that is uh, a startup. They're building a um, SEO product. And um, Chris and I met a few years, I think it's been like over a year now ago and um she introduced me to ux so um i took uh, the id labs boot camp and here i am now um so uh, as a courtesy if you are not speaking please mute yourself because this the background is extremely distracting uh so please 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 mute yourself so just take a look at your mic right now and see if it's on because then it's just there's a lot of background noise Cool. So I wanted to kind of introduce this. Um, it's not really a challenge. It's more like a workshop where we're going to participate and work in Figma Jam, but also Figma as a tool. And they're both really wonderful. Mm -hmm. They kind of serve different purposes. So Olana, I would say, is mm -hmm. more of my research counterpart, a lot more stronger. I lean definitely at UI. So if anybody's ever like, more of a visual who's like I just need to go in and break something and then put it back together like that's who I am so I needed somebody more thoughtful and methodical like a lot to balance me out and the idea today especially came from you know chit-chatting with a student and seeing like the interaction that we're having and it really emulated being in an office setting where you could just sit next to a designer and see how they do their work which is a fantastic learning opportunity but um we actually would love for all of you to participate in our Figma Jam file. And the challenge of today and for the next four sessions, if you miss one, that's totally fine. You can jump in at any moment. They all kind of have to do with different uh, topics. The first one is going to be today is an ideating. So we're actually going to come up with the idea together. Um, we're also going to, under Lana's leadership, do a little uh, user stories. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. There's user research, user stories, but we don't have enough too, time, too much time for user research like thoroughly. So we're gonna just dabble a little bit. We'll um, do our best. There you go. Um, and uh, next time, so and we're also gonna try to start to sketch. Next time we're gonna do wireframing in Figma. So today it's Figma Jam. Next time it's actually like Figma file. Uh, after that, it's creating a mock-up. And then last is prototyping. So four sessions every Monday for the next four Mondays. Uh, so let's get into it. I will be looking at um, more folks are joining. So I apologize if I'm a little bit like paying attention to a bunch of different fronts. So again, if you're still with us, where are you from? Uh, like I said, I'm from Philly. And Alona's like, where are you from, Denver now? Um, I still always say I'm from Philly, but yes, we're um, kind of hopping around the U.S. right now. So we are in Denver right now. I love it. Uh, I was telling you, I, was, I need to visit more places in the United States. So uh, again, I'll be a little bit distracted because I'm paying attention to Zoom, but please join us in the Figma file. So this is called Figma Jam. Uh, and the goal of today is to look at Twitter together and see what ideas we can come up with and ideate uh, on essentially creating more functionality, uh, bringing more business to the company, making wonderful, enjoyable experiences. So in user experience, what we have to remember is that whatever we create has to actually also be lucrative for the company. Um, so, Ilana, let's talk about a little bit, what are we designing? So let's- Yeah. So right now, um, I mean, I have Twitter pulled up because that's gonna be the platform we're working on. Um, and I'm just taking a quick look at it and creating my own um, insights and judgments of it. And also as somebody who hasn't used it a ton, I feel like um, that's kind of a benefit because I can see some of the things more in a fresh perspective versus folks that may have um, used it for a long time. But I think the first thing that we need to do before we even jump into this is think about uh, like, what is the problem? What is the problem that we're trying to solve for? And uh, 
that could be a whole host of things, right? And it's really up to us today to decide what we're going to solve for and what we're going to prioritize so that when we move into the next um, couple of activities, we have a clear direction. So, um, so I'm yeah. showing Twitter. Does everyone have Twitter in their country? I know that sometimes we talk about like we had Ikea and not everyone had Ikea. So I'm just curious, like how many of you had an interaction with Twitter? Put it in the chat keys if you've ever interacted with Twitter. And I would add that if there's specific things that that you see as a problem with Twitter, um, we would love to hear that too. I'm curious how other people experience it outside of my own experience. But um, one of the things that I first noticed about Twitter when I signed up, and one of the reasons why I signed up was uh, because of these threads that users would have that were teaching about certain different topics or just interesting little threads that I wanted to learn from. So I thought maybe we could look at either uh, improving that feature or um, just looking into how might we make this more uh, of a business solution for Twitter. Also another one that actually, something else that I noticed is whenever you do go to a user's profile, somebody might have thousands and thousands and thousands of tweets. And yes, you can search by hashtags, but I wanna know what this person has to say on this topic or what this person has to say around a certain, um, I don't know, it could be a TV show or maybe it okay. is something bigger like social justice or something else. So that is another uh, potential problem area. Hmm. So Ilona, I started taking some notes. So one is Twitter is an attack platform and everyone should be able to uh, edit. Uh, let's see, copy link. Uh, mute. So uh, can everyone try to access it? Oh, let's see, everyone muting. Let's try again. Uh, it's always so much fun to see everyone's like little uh, names start to pop up on Figma Jam. So let's just take a second to make sure everyone can get into the file. Um, it still won't open, still not working. That is so strange. So we might have to, why, why though? All right. Uh, I just changed the settings to anyone with the link can view. Everybody should be able to get in now. Okay, I see people getting in. All right, we, we see the, the little icons popping up. So how do you think we should structure it? So should we answer the question first of like what functionalities could we do or like uh, how do you, how would you lead this? Well, um, I before we even get there, I just wanted to take a quick look at um, what other people are saying what they use Twitter for. It looks like um, some people are using it for newsworthy events. Um, some people are also using it for a football live stream, I see that. Um, other people are using Twitter for some of their courses. So that's an interesting perspective. Um, and then if anybody else has any other ideas, we could add to that. Yeah. So I think uh, the way we could approach this is, is thinking about, um, I guess, where this lands in terms of uh, product, the users as well as a business case and finding which problem might be the best one to address because it's gonna it's gonna be um, solving multiple uh, problems. I love it. So, would you like us to jot down the use cases? Were we designed it for? Or like, were we? Used yeah, for that would be great. Let's. Um, I'll jot down some of the ones that I saw in the chat, and then we'll also add uh, a few other ideas and give it a minute to go through those. Okay. All right. So I'll admit, um, okay, I'm just going to delete this one then. What, what, what does Christina use Twitter for? Okay. Can I be honest? Uh, Twitter to keep up with the Kardashians, even though I don't watch the show. I'll admit it. I use Twitter to keep up with like the gossip just to see it's a just like a 30 second like okay let's quickly look at it and then never again so maybe that's not the best case scenario which is good because you need the bad ideas also to be like no 
in which case, Ilana, what would you say to me if I was really advocating for more Twitter as a gossip channel? Yeah, I was, I would think of it as kind of like, um, it, I immediately think of like podcasts that kind of follow TV shows and have commentary. So maybe this is where we could think about commentary channels um, and having that interactive like uh, communication. Um, and that might even go along with that idea of like watching live streams on there and being able to have um, places to like communities to chat about that. Mm -hmm. That could be interesting. Um, I also, I see a raised hand. Um, I just wanna make sure to get to, is there a question? Oh, I saw a raised hand. I apologize, I couldn't pick on you sooner, but uh, is there a question? Okay, let me know if there is. All right, let's take a quick look at these. And then I think what we can do is um, maybe think about which one might be the best one to address in terms of both user needs and business needs, and then come up with a how might we statement. So then we can start thinking about how we would solve this specific problem. All right, so see to see sports, uh, scores in real time. So again, there's that streaming aspect that seems to be a really common um, conversation, a common post-it that we're seeing. Paranormal podcasts. Ooh. Oh, okay. This is interesting. Um, so they don't want to use Twitter because it's too intrusive. So maybe that is an issue that's preventing people from getting on it. And interestingly enough, that is partially why I hadn't used it for so many years. It was just so overwhelming um, and so much information at once and constant information, which kept me off of the platform for a while. So why don't we also, if there's anything that we really like, uh, you're all welcome if you're looking at my screen, but if not, you can also like stamp them with an approval. A lot of times there's a voting system that goes into place. Uh, we kind of have a limited amount of time, but if you're if there's any ideas that you're popping up that you really like, please feel free to show them love. Uh, Christina, how, how would you like prioritize which problem you would be solving for in, in your like perspective? Sure, so I probably, um, as a, Kind of like this would be a little bit more in a strategy role. Uh, mm -hmm. If you're thinking about more like a access, um, let's just make sure that I can make it a little thicker. But how do I? And by the way, guys, if um, we're all getting to know Figma Jam a little bit better, so if we're still figuring out, bear with us. So um, at the top, there's I. Oops. I cost, right? Maybe something like that. I R Y. Um, I'm thinking of like a quadrant, but essentially uh, we would need to figure out how to find the most best a return on investment for the least amount of money, right? Um, mm -hmm. so this is high cost, this is low cost, this is maybe low ROI. If anybody's good at math, please feel free to tell me that I'm not doing this right. So I think what I would do then is I would try to take a post-it note and just kind of say like, where would I imagine that that thing lives? So I'd like to have a board with my interest. Uh, I follow national issues, polit politics and, uh, and economics as well as discovering new things. That's how I found my UX, uh, Ivana. So she's okay. asking for some sort of a board with interests, which right now we don't really have. I mean, Twitter, you could follow specific people, right? But where mm -hmm. do you guys think that it would exist? So it would probably be like, wait, did I do this right? High cost, low cost, higher ROI, low ROI. So it would be, I think maybe like smack dag in the middle. I think it's kind of would be a little, a little bit of money to get and it would. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I, that's a great one. Um, I think that one we could look at. And then another one that uh, a lot of people are liking, um, they tried using Twitter, but didn't really understand the point of it. Um, even though they have the bookmarking feature, it's not as easily accessible as Instagram save feature. So maybe looking at bookmarking and then we could also look at um, some of the other ones. But honestly, like we don't have to do it this way. This is just a strategy. Another idea is literally like, and I do this at work, voting on it. Um, so whoever gets the best idea basically wins. So um, let's say you guys have five votes. So go ahead and take a voting system because there might be a little bit too much uh, effort to organize all of them. So stick to five votes and vote on your favorite idea. So let's take some time together. Use Twitter as a news platform, so yes. Um, to keep our normal podcast. So, and also as we're doing this, we could also think about like, what is missing from Twitter, right? Not just like, mm -hmm. okay, we're doing this for normal activity. We're using Twitter for that. But where else does opportunity lie? Where else have we seen it kind of um, not live up to its expectations? Twitter recently, and this is why it does help to kind of know the company a lot more and be familiar with it. Twitter recently had fleets, which is like you can, is anybody familiar with Clubhouse? Clubhouse, the app, but Clubhouse essentially was like this podcasting app where you could come together and chit chat. Like Ilona and I would be talking right now and it's like a live podcast and Twitter tried that, but there was something to the disconnect of just, it wasn't, really working for Twitter for some reason, like there, maybe there wasn't enough money or um, not enough opportunity. Also, Ilana, how does Twitter make money? I believe it is uh, primarily ad revenue. Um, the other day I was looking at their business um, portion of their site. So I, I'm i pretty sure that's where the majority of their income is coming from, but that is a great point because that means that there's a whole market that they're not looking at um, because their market right now is businesses um in order to get them to pay to provide ads on the site okay. which um we were talking about the other day chris and i about how discreet the ads are that we don't even realize how ad filled it is in comparison to other sites like instagram and um, facebook so what we can do after we establish like what are the use cases that people have now we can think about like to bounce off those ideas, like where can we actually have an interesting path forward, right? So that's uh, establishing some problem areas. I tried using Twitter, but didn't understand what the, oops, what the gist is? Am I looking at the point? I think that, oh, I guess, uh, point what? of it, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, that one plus uh, the one that is about um, the Twitter bookmarking feature and improving bookmarks on Twitter, those are, seem to be the two very popular options here. So maybe we can take one of those and create a how might we question, so then we can move on to um, the next steps. Let's do it, because I think we're at time. So then, Ilana, what do you think we should do? So now that we have a bunch of use cases for how we use Twitter, let's think about either solving for a problem, solving for like, so it's, there's something wrong, right? There is a challenge and we need to improve upon it. So that's mm -hmm. more like the, the stick, right? That's the problem. Or we could look at the carrot. So if anybody doesn't understand the American um, saying, the carrot or the stick, if you're leading a donkey or a horse, I guess, are you giving it um, a carrot to motivate it? So carrot is positive or a stick is negative because the stick is obviously you're beating the horse to go faster. So what are what uh, we need to look at both the carrot and the stick. Should Twitter improve because there's a problem? Like what is the purpose? Like that's a problem, right? If, if a person doesn't know what Twitter is for, kind of a problem. Like what is Twitter for? What's the benefit of it? Or we can look at the carrot, which is like, what can Twitter do to provide a really lovely experience and functionality um, to essentially create you know, more money and more revenue by having more users, ha by having them stay on the platform longer, et cetera. So it's both. Um, so we 
let's put down some ideas, I guess. Uh, Ilana, would you say that, like to put some ideas on what we could do to create a project? Like what kind of projects we we could create? Well, um, I think that we could probably just maybe pick one of these based on what we think would be the better priority, like whether we should go in the direction of bookmarking or whether we should go in the direction of improving some, like whatever that problem is that is preventing people from uh, from using it. I think maybe for the sake of time, we could probably go with a bookmarking feature just because um, there would be a lot more exploration needed to look at why people aren't signing up and what is so overwhelming about it. Like that side, I think would take a little bit more research. And this is where my research approach would want to come in and ask people more questions. Um, what do you think about that? I like it. So bookmarking would uh, essentially establish, what would it help us to do? What would bookmarking allow us to do? Like what are the use cases for bookmarking and having a higher level of, I guess, authority over our experience? Yeah, so um, one, I, I think one idea that I have is how, like, in a way, it could be kind of like a Pinterest board, a way of keeping things within certain topics or getting inspiration. Um, uh, another use case is just like a knowledge hub, building a knowledge hub. Um, lots of companies do this, lots of uh, class classrooms do this where people keep track of information. So maybe that's how they could use it within a classroom setting or within uh, more of like, a, like somebody had mentioned courses. Um, those are just a few of the ones that I have off the top of my head. Yeah, so do you wanna just record some of these ideas? Let's say that's the direction. We're going towards bookmarking, a little bit of Pinterest, a little bit of knowledge. If we just record down some ideas that we're thinking, I'm seeing even in the comments, Organizing categories, yes, Chelsea. So a higher form of control for the user, right? Like make the user feel in charge of their experience on the platform. Valerie says, yes, the whole Pinterest board is so cool. Like Instagram saved, yeah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Eve says, I agree that a Pinterest board approach would be good. There's lots of information like cherries to donate to uh, the people want to keep. So Ilana, what else are you thinking? So it would be nice to have bookmarking, saving, maybe having like your own boards. Mm -hmm. Potentially even um, having ways to share that information with other people. So like maybe if you're in a team or if you're in a group of people that like the same topic, you'd be like, hey, here's all these tweets that I think are relevant to you know, maybe responsive design, maybe some other topic that I really enjoy. So um, potentially sharing it. So traditionally, we would also perhaps make a user persona. And you don't always have to make those. But I something we've been doing uh, in a boot camp, but also just a, at my job, is telling stories. So why don't we pick a use case? Do you want to name the person we're designing for? Um, well, we, let's name them. Uh, I, I guess we'll start maybe female. We'll do that. And then we could name them um ivy we'll start with that ivy yeah it's very fitting for halloween i love it <laughs> maybe i've got halloween on my mind <laughs> you already have a costume not yet no but i i have an idea I, I don't know if we'll be able to get it in time but we're gonna try uh in the comment section if you do celebrate halloween please tell me where you're being please give me ideas because i don't know and it's a week <laughs> left and i'm i'm I finally am like ready to make an investment into a costume. So let me know what you're being so I could steal that idea basically. So yeah. we have Ivy, Steampunk Bolita. Ooh, I like that. Um, Black Swan, Squigging Soul. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna just find a green jumpsuit and call it a day. You might have trouble. I hear that they've been selling out like crazy. That's true. Um, I heard the sales for Vans has gone up like skyrocketed. Not like, surprised. Right um, hmm. um, yeah, so I think this is where user personas are really helpful and where I like to think of user stories. Um, the way that I like to think about it is like, what might a user, what is like the before they start using whatever feature during, like, why are they using this feature? And then after, what might they get from this feature? Like, um, 
for example, before they start bookmarking, they might be actively looking for resources and specifically on Twitter to find information that they need to know for whatever reason. Um, and so when they're on there, they want to wait to save it, which is the obvious portion. And then after that, they want a way to reference it. So um, those that whole flow, that's what we're going to think about in terms of how to design. We could come up with a couple of different ones and maybe think about um, which one we want to solve for and which one would be the biggest like use case. Okay. Where would you like to do this? Do you want to do this in Figma Jam to write a couple stories or where would you like to do this? Yeah, we could do like um, uh, we we could do like a couple little I guess boxes here. Mm -hmm. uh, never mind. Let me. I wonder if, like why it's is it okay? So that's why can't I change the so oh. the first? Oh. I guess I'm just gonna start by creating like a couple. Do you want to start a different color than purple? Yeah, so I'm below underneath the step two, and yes. I'm currently using a tan post-it, so you'll see that. So I'll do like a first user story. Um, so in this case, we had a user, and we can just keep like keep going in rows, that way we can keep track. But the first user story I have here is this person is um, researching for a project, or um, maybe they're writing an article. Um, and they're looking for people's thoughts on some current event. And they need a way to save it. And then they need a way to reference it. And um, I'll be right back. Keep going. And maybe a way to organize that information as well. So that's one user story. And then I see some other folks have started on their own user story. So we have, as a new user, I want to save tweets relevant to my interests so I can reference them later. Perfect. And in what context might a user want to reference them later? When are they gonna, when are they gonna need to go back to that um, tweet and go back and look at what information they saved? Um, are they gonna be on the go? Are they going to be, um, like what is the context, the bigger picture of how they're gonna be using this feature? So in my first user story, they're just gonna be referencing it, um, you know, from their desktop because they're just writing an article. But as someone who just finds relevant tweets uh, tweets relevant to their interest, they might um, look at that on their phone or maybe they might be at home. They could be in a variety of contexts. So I do, uh, I think it's always helpful to think about what context a user is gonna be in when they're using this feature. And it looks like Tiff asked if closed captioning can be turned on, no? I'm not sure how to do that. It doesn't look like the options of it. I looked at the um, settings. I see annotate, but I don't know if that's the right one. So, um. so another user story um, here is uh, someone said, as a novel user, they want to categorize tweets so they can reference them later by searching for them. So that might be really important for us to design a way to search those saved tweets. We'll give it. Um, so. Even like, I think the question, which again, maybe is soul searching for the company, but Maggie kind of hit it, hit the nail on the head. Like, what is the purpose of the company? That's a good question. I think Twitter has been instrumental um, for information sharing really, really, really quickly and like opinions and like communication. I think Twitter is one of those social media platforms that does have a little bit of soul searching to do where they don't even know, <laughs> where they don't even know what like, the purposes at all times like I would argue I think you know Ilana and I were briefly talking how like for example uh, there's so much value created for like people who make or who are like influencers for TikTok 
or influencers for Instagram, right? Like you can be an influencer on these platforms, but can you be an influencer on Twitter? Like who's a Twitter influencer? I think Twitter is more like it draws a lot of professionals who just want to share their thoughts. But a lot of times I think with Twitter, it feels like you're talking to a void a little bit. It's an interesting platform. It's like, um, I think information sharing for now and doing so quickly. Yeah, I have to agree with you there, Chris. I, I think that that's what they're good at. But um, with so much information sharing going on everywhere, that's where like they might have to look at how they do that nowadays and how they're going to stand out as well from the competition. 100%. So, so another interesting use case scenario, job postings and networking opportunities. So somebody said that a lot of people tweet things like that and um, they like to save them so they can go when they get home, contact um, whoever it is that posted it or just apply for the job. And so that's also very really interesting. I'm looking at the link that was just shared. And, you know, I think designers have to be kind of chameleons where they can kind of stick to ID problems really quickly. But a lot of times you kind of do need to be really well immersed in the company to understand like the challenges, the opportunities. So right now, Ilona and I are just like doing this challenge with two ounces worth of research on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. whereas like if we work for Twitter, I'm sure a lot more would come to light of like, where are the opportunities, where do they lie? But it's, so if anybody has a chance, Daphne Lund uh, posted a really nice, it looks like a nice, um, article on Twitter. So as we're doing this thing, we could definitely, uh, read up more about this and keep ideating. So, um, Chris, I think that the winner here is the job posting um, uh, use case scenario and saving um, for jobs and reaching out to potential networks. Um, there's a lot of other really good ones on here too, um, like research, uh, supporting creators. I, as a fan, I want to get noticed by my favorite creators. Um, and being able to edit their bookmarks, forwarding it to other apps. But I think the clear winner here is solving for that um, bookmarking for job searching situations. Okay, that sounds interesting. I think more necessary than ever. Um, mm -hmm. Especially because now like with remote work, you know, we're getting so much of our information uh, from peer to peer as well, I would say. So there's a lot there. Uh, so do we want to take that um, that user story and start to move to sketching or how do you feel about that or should we stick to this a little bit longer? So let's think about the difference. So job posting and networking opportunities. A lot of people tweet things like these and user like to save them, come across a tweet and go. Um, okay. And then other people like to learn about new topics. And so let me ask you and also the public, how does this make the company money? Please respond in the chat. Like what would us, um, let's say Twitter, spending millions and millions of dollars to build out this functionality, what are we trying to achieve here from the financial business sense what's the return on investment why would we well potentially this has a, a opportunity to bring in new users because now um very quickly like maybe other job resume posting websites aren't necessarily the first place people go anymore um they are going to their network first and that's more likely for them to get jobs so definitely bringing in a, a different user base that, than maybe what they already have. That would be my first thought. And other people are saying definitely more users, uh, more leads. Credibility. That's an interesting one, the word credibility. Mm -hmm. Would you agree, Ilana, that like nowadays, um, businesses need to be like pretty authentic and uh, this is such a biased question if you're ever doing research this is the <laughs> most leading question i've ever definition posted. of a bad question right there <laughs> um 
would you agree with this extremely biased thing that I'm about to say? But okay. I've noticed that recently a business cannot separate itself from morals, values, um, and kind of like ethics. Whereas maybe once upon a time it used to be able to do so. And now if somebody's hiring or somebody's like has a business, you kind of want to know who's behind the veil. Like mm -hmm. tell me more about the company. So I think the word credibility is really interesting here. Yes, and actually that is interesting because not only might it bring users onto the platform, now it will potentially bring new uh, businesses onto the platform that may have not seen the value of Twitter in the past, but are finding the value if there's good like networks on there, um, they're able to build their own brand on there. Um, so that could be another um, another way for them to find value in this feature. So what are the current alternatives to this functionality? Like when we're thinking about competitors, who are the competitors of this? Like what is for job postings? Jules says LinkedIn. Yep, that was my first thought too. Fishbowl, interesting. Um, I haven't heard of Fishbowl. Have you heard of Fishbowl? Mm -mm. Upwork is another one, yes. Handshake, Idea Labs, Idea Labs, hey. <laughs> so we're more like a job, well, I guess we're a job board. Uh, just so all of you are aware, you know, a lot of times LinkedIn, just so you know, it costs $400 to post a job. So there is money for Twitter if you can have um, this available. In addition, uh, you can also have, maybe Twitter wants to get into the job, uh, job kind of market. And it could totally replace uh, the uh, automatic, no, what is it called? The ATS. So you know how we have the greenhouse and all that? What is that called? The uh, automatic? Um, automatic no, something it's... reading. Applicant tracking system. That's what that is. So maybe Twitter wants to have its own applicant tracking system. And instead of having the you know, uh, an employer go through hoops and loops to establish, you know, to find uh, appropriate candidates, maybe Twitter can be a host for everything. Maybe that's how they can make some money. Um, and companies would then want to, <laughs> Jules says, replace ATS, yes, please. <laughs> so uh, 438, I think we're probably at a good spot. Do we want to get into a little bit sketching just to see some ideas? I think the job posting could be a really fascinating angle. Interesting. Like, yeah, let's. I think let's get into it. Okay, guys. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, here, like, we need to do a little bit of maneuvering. And we're going to jump over to the Figma, to a Figma file. Uh, I'm going to make sure that everyone can edit this copy link. I know this was like kind of hard the first time, but we got this. So, is everyone seeing the link? I just updated the settings, so it should be able to. Um... Everyone should be able to see it. Oh, it looks like you pasted it on Figma. Did you send it to the chat as well? Yes. Okay. Um, did it not work because uh, because there's a waiting room apparently? I can't send it to everyone. This is so strange. Everyone in meeting. See, no, Ilana, we should have redesigned Zoom. That's that's what I want to design. <laughs> yeah, Zoom is a, uh, yeah. Oh, everyone's here. Okay. Just so everyone knows what the layout of Figma is, we have session one, ideation, and sketching, and we're just going to go session by session. All right. Um, we did give you all some goodies to work on, which is Twitter feed desktop. So we can take this and essentially take it apart, et cetera. Don't uh, just copy this. Don't work in this section, Twitter UI and UI kit. So just borrow these. Don't edit them, but feel free in here to um, to take the Twitter UI if we want to sketch it or if we just want to be down and dirty. So the way that I'm encouraging all of you to just kind of find your little space if you want to work along with us um, and also follow along. But I think the first thing we could do is probably not even this, right? We would probably just do some basic basic sketching. Thoughts? All right, while you um, set that up, I'm going to go ahead and change everybody's settings to can edit so they are able to sketch along. Okay, so how would we sketch this out? This is, you guys created a tough one, a good one, but a tough one. Hmm. So should we take five minutes to sketch out some ideas? 
Yeah, I think so. Um, let me just finish getting through all these users. It looks like it's only letting me do it by um, one by one. So if you're still in view only mode, um, I'm working on it. Uh, that's for a while. That's strange. Take us getting there. We're going to get there. Okay, guys. So you basically, if you want to take this guy apart, you're welcome to um, just uh, press down the option key. Press down the option key and drag him away to your corner of the screen, wherever you like just so you can have something to work with. And if you don't have a chance, you can always find him under Twitter UI. So if you're like, oh, this is just too much. So there's either this way, which if you wanna just skip ahead to do like the, to, to kind of see the UI in front of you, but please always allow yourself to just sketch with just a basic piece of paper and a pen, right? So sketching can be extremely messy and doesn't have to be uh, super disciplined. Yeah, personally, I'm I'm definitely a paper sketcher, and then once I kind of have a couple solid wireframes or ideas, then I'll bring it into Figma. Mm -hmm. But it's also fun to play on the computer um, whenever I feel like it. I love it. Um, I cannot sketch for my life, actually, um, so I can only do digital things. All right. So it looks like. Twitter already has a bookmarks feature, doesn't it? Huh. Yeah, so the issue that I think people were having with the bookmarks feature is the ability to really tailor it to your own experience and what you need from it. Um, let's see, I do have a couple bookmarks, so let me take a look at what it looks like on my end. Yeah, so it looks like it's just in the order of how you saved it. And it's pretty much the only organization. So if we have that and I can save it, how do you even? Oh, is there? A, is that what? No. Hmm. I just want to create a bookmark on. You guys, we all uncovered a problem. I don't know how to save <laughs> things to my bookmarks. Okay. Uh, oh wow! Oh my gosh! Okay, so I will admit, as a user, this always really bothers me. Like I always confuse the two. So this is share, as everyone can see share i'm going to toggle mm -hmm. and this is what is this more what is the difference what is the difference between share and more it doesn't make any sense why is there more which allows me to do so many things like embed report mute whatever mm -hmm. and share which to me i should just yeah i don't understand also bookmark how is bookmark different from add to list you know this is like an action that i'm trying to do to save this account so i'm not sure why it's different and this actually really irritates me um, because i do share a lot of things from twitter to like id labs so just something something to think about so okay what would that look like uh david huang i adore him so i'm gonna bookmark him just to see I agree with Jules. How is bookmark related to share? I don't know. That is a good question. Um, so maybe the question is, I would explore probably is, am I happy with, like, I guess the information architecture where things are displayed, where under more is all of these options, but then under share are all these options. Do I want to add an icon here? Like I'm, I'm using my sketching brain right now. I'm not, I'm not in the UI portion yet, but more so like, are these? So I have like, retweet, you know, comment, retweet, like, and share. Should I add one more? I don't know. Uh, the rule here is we want to stick to under five options at all times for um, choices. I forget what law that is. Miller's law. I'm not sure. Um, this goes for the whole um, menu bar there because interestingly a lot of times when i click on the reply feature it's not because i want to reply it's i want to read the replies and i think a lot of people in communities in general are uh, are um often just like silent observers 
and not necessarily commenting or replying, they just want to read. So whenever you click the reply here, I find that a this whole like bottom bar a little bit confusing as well. Mm -hmm. I do too. Or but at least getting to where the replies are is kind of tricky. So um, I, I think I agree with you that bookmarking, um, I think that it's a feature that people are starting to use more and more and potentially, and this is something where re research might show us specifically if this is necessary, but I think that it may be something that would need to be added as a separate icon. So not bookmarks, you would, you in your, uh, in your head, like maybe we should do a totally different icon entirely, like a different menu option, or where would you add it? I would just add it to that bottom like navigation bar probably and um, make it more visible to users. So it's not just hidden in this uh, share menu. Mm. Also then what is, that makes me wonder like, well, mm -hmm. I guess there's liking too, which is interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, and the challenge with, challenge with the fact that it's already like all mocked up is this, so retweet um we catch <laughs> i am designer yeah so it looks like other people here in our chat are also agreeing that it takes two clicks to add a bookmark but it should be one just like the rest of the menu at the bottom there so that's actually interesting that you lined it up that way because i wonder if that um that might be a way to line it up like on the left hand side or right hand side instead of this are you saying basically like mm -hmm. and the actions are along the left hand side so i actually by the time that you guys work on this next week with us i might have to un uh, change this document because there's a lot of components that might be a little bit too difficult to navigate um so that's on me that's interesting yeah something like that oh <laughs> and okay all right and then me and then this is where adding that fifth bookmark option would to me make a little bit more sense it feels a little bit less cluttered here along the left hand side versus like if it was on the bottom so uh by the way for all of you i'm gonna utilize uh the plugin called material design icons uh, for simplicity's sake, I would show you what else I could do, but uh, if I wanted to get more icons, I would choose this. If uh, you're not familiar, Material is from Material um, Design Google. It is a free open source uh, design system where you are able to essentially learn from Google as they kind of describe the best design principles. So feel free to peruse this, it's phenomenal. But what they did was essentially they've given out icons for free for all of us. Um, funny enough, I can never find it on their website. Like, I know it's ironic, but I, I as a user can never find where the icons are. So I always just Google them. Um, but they give you a whole bunch of uh, topics and understanding about it. I would just go to material design icons. I know it's so ironic that Google should be reading this, but I can never find it. That's not what I want. Um, and we have someone asking a question. Why are we adding the icons to the left rather than the bottom? Can you please explain that design decision? Um, I think right now we're just experimenting a little bit. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's where it's going to be. Part of um, something uh, Chris and I were talking about recently is part of UX design is just experimenting. And I, I think that's kind of the approach we're taking here. And we'll, we could play around with a couple of different ways. I can elaborate even further on that. So exactly. To mirror what Alona said, 100% on the money. There's no reason for it. Sometimes a designer acts because there's principles in place. And by the way, I sent out lawsofux.com, which is a collection of laws that recommend uh, reasons for designing your work in a specific manner due to psychological principles, right? So Miller's law is what I just uh, highlighted, this guy, Miller. Uh, George Miller recommended that we should keep things under five options. 
Why? Because human beings can only concentrate on so many options, right? So sometimes in design, a lot of times, it's rooted in psychology. And a lot of times, like what we're doing right now, is rooted in tinkering until it looks aesthetically pleasing and it speaks to the, to the hidden brain of the user. Um, when I say the hidden brain, so uh, sometimes when you have um, options on your phone, your fingers naturally want, want to gravitate towards uh, not the left side, but the right side to click OK, right? Think about how you're behaving. Your brain has a connection and you're naturally more inclined to click um, on the button on the right side. It's closer to your finger. Uh, we're just more programmed as human beings to do so. So there's some like psychological reasons and which is pattern behavior. And there's also this, which is why not? Let's figure it out. Is this going to be problematic? Is this gonna be weird or is this something interesting? So there's no bigger reason than that right now. There's yeah, and I feel like when when you're able to kind of take the experimentative direction, you can pro you can kind of get to ideas that you may not have considered before, or get to um, just concepts that may not be something that you would have originally thought of because you allowed yourself to kind of have that space to um, try different things. Exactly, and I can share a quick lesson, but I want to just highlight. So this is material from Google Fonts, both material icons. They are 100% free, just to show you how I would do it is, let's say I want to bookmark, um, we could pick maybe what looks like a, a bookmark, maybe one of these, right? You're also, by the way, for all of you, you could do rounded, you could do sharp, you could do two-tone, et cetera, you could do outline, doesn't really matter, whatever your preference is. So maybe I want to do bookmark border. There's multiple ways of bringing things into Figma. Let's just say I want to do SVG. You always want to do an SVG. So it's a vector file, just so all of you know. Um, or you could do a plugin. So if you ever, if you Google material design icons plugin, you could just do it this way, which is much quicker. But I want to show you this as well. So this is my icon. Please notice it is currently attached to a frame. I'm not sure why Figma does this, but regardless, I wanna drag it off of the frame and put it where I need to put it, which is probably right there, right? I'm gonna hit option and I'm gonna see that it's 12 points away. If you experiment on your own laptop, um, it's option on a Mac and op, uh, alt on a PC. So without getting into too much details, uh, in the world of design, it's suggested to work on a principle of eight. So every object should be multiple of eight away from each other. So option, I'm looking, it's 21, one, two, 24, 28, so I'm gonna bring it to, I am getting ahead of myself, I know, because I'm trying to uh, teach, whereas in sketching, you don't need to do this, but if you are somebody who's like kind of uh, detail-oriented, that's how you do that, right? So now we have some sort of a little bit of organization and we can kind of judge. Um, by the way, if I did this in the plugin, it would be the same thing, bookmark, Boom, right there, same thing. It's, um, I don't know, that's like perfect. They did that amazingly well. Boom, right, same thing. It's on a Figma and a, and a frame. I wanna drag it off the frame, delete the frame. There's my icon. It doesn't matter how you do it. It's gonna give you the same result, whatever's more comfortable to you. And the last thing that I would wanna do is change the color eyedropper tool. Boom, something like that. I mean, I know it's a different style, but again, we're just sketching. And usually if the company, if you would be working for the company, they would give you their UI components. Anyhow, what do we think about this idea, Delana? Uh, I mean, I think that, that there's definitely still some more room to play, but maybe we could um, think about what the actual bookmarking tool might look like. But to this point, I do think it might be really valuable to have the bookmarking icon there visible and accessible and um, something that users can be more aware of and easier to access. I think so too. So that would be kind of, um, again, I would have to change, so I apologize. There's a lot of components in place, which I would just delete for the rest of you. But so now this is kind of what it's looking like. Okay, so we have um, this and now we just keep on experimenting. So. Once I'm happy with this style, I would go ahead and choose what is the next page would look like, right? Where would that lead me if I bookmark it? So you probably would want, like the way I would think about it is you probably would want some feedback that your bookmark was saved. 
Um, that would be something that I would consider first. And then um, you would need a way to go into it and to look into it. So maybe, maybe you can link directly to the bookmarks that once it saves, um, you're able to click like view my bookmark or something like that. That's to yeah. take you there. So you're actually, you're like, I, um, what, I love that you're already thinking about like the actual prototype and um, <laughs> this is definitely more like UI, but let's say I'm content with this. Let's say I'm, I'm happy with okay. this style. Then yes, I would show some sort of feedback loop in which case we want to show that we hit this bookmark, right? So one of the easiest ways to probably do that is why? I could probably fill in bookmark now. That's right. Perfect. Yeah, that way we know that. Um, yeah, and then I would think maybe like potentially like designing a modal would be helpful too, but we could definitely move on to what the actual bookmarks page looks like. Okay, well, um, you see guys, we have the before, we did not hit the bookmark, and then we do here. And yes, we're, we're definitely a little bit more married to the design at this point than we should be, I think. But again, this is all in experimentation and good fun, so no big deal. Um, traditionally, you would just keep on sketching and sketching and sketching until you're content. But Ilona and I are like, you know what, once you see it, once you know what you want, you know what you want. What's the point? Yeah, I feel like we can definitely do a little bit more sketching on the actual bookmark page. Um, this is the only problem with... And I'm going to take a peek at what other people are sketching and see what kind of ideas other people have. Yes. Next time I'll recreate this from scratch where it's a lot easier to manipulate the file. Sorry, guys. It's just a little bit too advanced for now for this kind of activity, but... Ooh. So it looks like... Um, some of the ideas include having categories at the top, so not necessarily like a board, but just having um, the categories, and then I'm guessing you would click into it to see whatever category you're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, let me take a look at what else we have. Then we have people... Um, a left hand filter menu. So you're able to filter your posts or your saved bookmarks and then a search bar at the top and then the actual posts um, in the main uh, frame. I lost you, where did you go? Oh, there you are. Oh, okay, ooh. So like that's an interesting one as well. So Pooja decided to like, let's like tackle the page board head on, which I really like a lot of times like, um, as designers, we want to kind of work on the most exciting part first. Love that. Oh, there you go. Um, Ilona, if you hit the side slash, you could have a bigger like kind of um, bubble next to your name, so it's a little bit easier to find you. Uh. Let me see. It's a backward slash or whatever it's called. What is that called? Is that working for you? Hmm. Yes, it's a little bit bigger. I don't know if it's worth that much. Doesn't matter. We're trying something new in Figma. Um, so we're trying new things. I love it. Oh, okay, Daisy's got like a little a red icon to show that there's another bookmark added. Okay, that's interesting. So, oh, because bookmarks you an act, maybe like it's just once you added it, it's going to be self populating, maybe. Hmm. So, I think now that it's 5 p.m., I think this was really interesting to get started. Um, what do you think, Elena? Do we have some meat to work with? Yeah, I think I think we can do a little bit more uh, next session, do a little bit more ideating on what the bookmark page looks like and then start building out wireframes. But I feel like we have kind of an idea there. I think it's just to bring back like the story of Eve. Um, she's job searching, she's using bookmarks. The question there, you know, was like, does it populate by itself? So like once I introduce a bunch of things, will Twitter give me suggestions? Um, so there's some questions there, but I think we are off to a good start. 
how was this for everyone? What did you all think? Was this kind of like a good beginning to a problem that we set up? Yeah, does anyone have any questions that they, that they feel like um, weren't really answered today? Oops, what did I just do? Here we go. Nice, really enjoy this. Cool. Um, well, if you need our help, Elena and I are both on the IDA Lab Slack. Uh, mm -hmm. Today was a little bit chaotic because we're all getting uh, used to Figma and like Figma Jam. I've never had to do anything with Figma Jam before. We used to use Miro or Mural. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you for bearing with us in moments of like, why is things not working? Please join us on our Slack channel if you want to just keep hanging out with us. But if not, then I do believe I'll be seeing all of you alongside with Dylan next week, in which case we're going to start finalizing the sketches and like putting together some wireframes of how it looked like. I will recreate the file so it's a lot easier to work with. But even today, uh, sketching with like gray squares is 100% appropriate and, and needed. The next session, um, that will be next Monday at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to share the document with all of you. Um, this is the first time we're doing an exercise of like, like a four-parter like this. So I hope uh, this is kind of fun. I know it's a little bit different, but we're trying to figure out new ways of teaching. Mm -hmm. I'm completely new to this, and this was mm -hmm. super informative. Thank you, Swati. I love it. My heart is melting. I love it. If you have no further questions, uh, I'll stay on. Uh, but if you are no questions, thank you so much for joining us. This is so much fun. And we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Thank you. How was this for you? Were you like, oh,